Highlighting history of suburban Sydney with the St Peter's Cooks River History Group. Our aim is to preserve and promote local history. We are based at St Peter's in Sydney's Inner West. Botany is the only community in the world to have that name. The presence of water, fresh or salt, is inextricably bound to its history. Aboriginal people lived around the shores of Botany Bay. An Aboriginal named Marut recalled that in the 1790s, when he was a child, there were about 400 of his tribe living on the northern shore of Botany Bay. James Cook visited the area in 1770. Cook's recommendation and botanist Joseph Banks' enthusiasm were largely responsible for the British government's decision to found a penal colony at Botany Bay. When Arthur Phillip arrived in 1788, he found the lowlands a perfect swamp, lacking fresh water and the bay shallow and exposed. The earliest industry was the manufacture of lime. Shells were gathered and burnt to create lime to be used in mortar for buildings in Sydney. The lime was transported in small boats. Edward Redmond, transported for life for his involvement in the 1798 Irish Rebellion, was one of the first landowners in the area. The name Mudbank was used for the locality for many years, and a road which terminated nearby was known as Mudbank Road, reflecting the swampy nature of the land. Another early settler, Andrew Byrne, also involved in the Irish Rebellion, had land just beyond Redmond's. Andrew and Mary Byrne's farms were named Seaview and Newcastle. In 1813, a subscription fund was set up to form a direct carriage road to Botany Bay. The existing road was intricate, precarious and in many places dangerous. Botany was to become a venue for sporting activities. One of the earliest in 1814 was pugilism. The combatants John Berenger and Charles Sefton met in a field on the road to Botany, about half a mile from the race course. In the 1820s, the fear of invasion led to soldiers being stationed at the watchtower. They were to be a lookout for problems at this isolated back door to the colony. A fishing industry was established. Early maps show wharves described as the landing place at Botany Bay, known as Mudbank. Simeon Lord, after arriving in the colony as a convict, prospered. He was granted land at Botany and became one of the colony's earliest manufacturers, establishing the first privately run woolen mill, which was driven by water. Fisher and Duncan erected a paper mill on the swamps. They advertised for linen and cotton rags and announced they would manufacture paper at as cheap a rate as in Britain. In February 1819, Andrew Byrne advertised Seaview and Newcastle for sale. They were noted for stock, particularly horses, on account of an extensive salt marsh. A fishery supplied abundant fish. Lord was granted an additional 600 acres, where he established a flour mill at the mouth of Cooks River. In 1826, 700 acres of land were surveyed for T.M. Winder at the northeastern side of the water reserve. 131 acres were granted to John Neathway Brown. This became known as Bunnerong. Sydney was short of water. The large body of fresh water belonging to Mr Lord at Botany was seen to be sufficiently large to supply the whole of Sydney. In November 1828, the road to Botany was impassable for carriage conveyance with ruts and deep holes and most, if not all, of the bridges were tumbling or about to tumble down. A new road was proposed to transport the fish, pork, poultry and vegetables that went to Sydney. A large area of land was reserved as church and school lands. In 1830, the New South Wales Veteran Corps was to be disbanded. The Surveyor General recommended some of the swamp as suitable for the location of its members. From 6 to 12 allotments were marked off and four huts erected. The area became known as Veteran Swamp. By 1833, a new road, now Bunurong Road, had been completed. It was a mile to the flat, used as a training ground for racehorses, and where it was proposed to form a race course. About two miles on to the right were the ruins of a paper mill, and the head of the swamp intended to supply Sydney with water. 
Half a mile further on was the Loughlin Mill. The Aboriginal Maroot became a sailor, sealer, whaler and boat steerer. By sheer persistence, he was granted a 10-acre lease on the northern shore of Botany Bay. He built two slab timber huts near a creek and used his boat to make a living as a fisherman. In 1834, there were two salt fanning establishments for the manufacture of salt. Each produced an average of a tonne a week. In July 1835, James Backhouse, a Quaker, visited the colony and called at small huts of a few settlers which were on the edge of a marsh. Many of the cottages built by veteran soldiers had been deserted and their lands had passed into other hands. The cock pen for sale in 1838 was described as the choicest bon bouche in the whole parish of Botany, situated on the right-hand side of the old Botany Road, it had the blessings of health, sea bathing, fowling and angling. Sports events continued to be held at Botany. In March 1838, the Sydney subscription races were held on the Botany course near Lord's Mill, a race course of the cruelest and most inhumane description. At every bound, the horses sank a foot deep into loose sand. A mill came off at Mudbank near Botany between Gorick and a man named Taylor. In 33 rounds, Gorick polished off his antagonist to a nicety. The contest was good and met the approbation of the spectators. J. McElhouse wrote, The accompanying plate represents the villa, residence and manufactory belonging to Simeon Lord. The production of his looms, especially his blankets, may be compared to those in England. Mr. Lord has for a considerable time afforded employment to about 60 persons. In January 1840, Simeon Lord died at his residence, Banks House at Botany, aged 69 years. Fishing became an important industry. In the 1840s, there were fishermen's huts on the beach beyond John Brown's Bunnerong Grant, and a second group of fishermen settled near the foot of what is now Bay Street. For sale in June 1841 were 100 acres adjoining the Cockpen Estate, to be known as the Township of Botany. The parish of Botany had 554 inhabitants and 112 houses, 28 of stone or brick and 84 of wood. A steeplechase was run over the country near Botany. Great was the gathering of gallant gentlemen and fair ladies hurrying on to the destined spot. Every horse in Sydney seemed to have been brought into requisition. The race was three miles, with nine post and rail fences four feet high. The ground was heavy and sandy. Noxious industries were established in the area. The rendering down of sheep, fell mongering and wool washing. By 1844, Thomas Kellett's Banks Inn had become the Sir Joseph Banks Hotel. He invited those who had not visited Botany Bay to do so, as it was considered one of the healthiest spots in the colony for invalids, with sea bathing at the door of the house. Dinners or lunches were provided at the shortest notice. In October 1846, the volunteer artillery practised at Botany. Their field pieces were stationed on the sandy beach and aimed at targets moored in the bay. The Reverend James Hassel wrote, I have never had a worse class of people to deal with than some of the old fishermen at Botany. The district was as wild and godless a place as I have ever known. I have baptised as many as eight children at a time from one family and had the satisfaction of starting a school there with 40 children. Botany continued to be a place for sport and recreation. The match between Tommy the Taylor's white dog Stupid and Dutch Sam's mouse-coloured dog came off at the Botany Swamp. Stupid, after fighting an hour and ten minutes, was declared the conqueror. Both dogs were well handled and fought gamely. The Sydney Rifle Club held its usual New Year meet. The trial ground was a new one formed at the edge of the Botany Swamp. An improvement in arrangements was the erection of a small tent from beneath which the competitors fired. The Fitzroy Hounds, this tidy little pack, threw off near the Long Swamp Botany and after a severe run of nearly four miles, the scent would not lie and the dogs were lost. In January 1850, Marut died. 
he had spent the last years of his life in a gunya or bark shelter in the grounds of the Sir Joseph Banks Hotel. He was buried in the garden near the beach. At that time, the Sir Joseph Banks Hotel was owned by William Beaumont and James Waller. The garden was extensive and a conservatory had just been added. A ballroom was in the course of erection, a riding school had been established and a bathing house built at the end of the long jetty. The zoological collection included an elephant, the only one ever landed on the shores of Australia. New animals arrived, a magnificent royal Bengal tiger, an Indian bear and a curious sample of the monkey genus. On Boxing Day 1852, it was estimated that 5,000 persons, a sixth of Sydney's population at that time, visited the pleasure grounds. In 1855, 30 years after botany was first suggested as a water supply for Sydney, the City Council began resuming land, including the botany wetlands. In December 1857, the foundation stone of the Waterworks Engine House was laid. The surviving engine house and chimney date from that time. Between 1866 and the mid-1870s, six dams were constructed. A portion of Lord's Land was subdivided in 1859 as Burley Township. In 1861, an attempt was made to form a railway company. A bill authorising the construction of the line passed through Parliament, but the project was abandoned. Victor Moyse, proprietor of the Sir Joseph Banks Hotel in 1863, made further provisions for visitors, a cricket pitch, a bowling green and archery ground. Beaumont zoological gardens could still be visited, although he had severed connections with the inn. In August 1864, on the outskirts of Botany, there were many market gardens considered to produce some of the finest vegetables that were ever brought into town. After the district itself was entered, there were frequent roadside cottages with large gardens. Here and there were residences of greater pretension. Other buildings which had been established were St Matthew's Anglican Church, two Wesleyan Methodist chapels, the Mount St Bernard Roman Catholic Church and the Chapel of the Independents known as the Botany Tabernacle. There was a national school. The post office, temperance hall and tea gardens were on the Bunurong Road. The only regular transport was the mail coach, which ran twice a day. The hours at which it ran were not convenient to businessmen, and the high fare was a serious addition to a working man's weekly expenses. In September 1868, the foundation stone of a new public school was laid by Mrs G. W. Lord. The school buildings would include a suitable residence for the master. An invasion force arriving at Botany Bay was still a possibility in January 1871. The road to the head of Botany Bay was finished and ready for the movement of the artillery in that direction. Two guns would be stationed at Botany to protect the waterworks from attack. In October 1877, the suburb had an extensive kerosene works, four or five large wool washing establishments, soap manufactories, tanneries, Brick factories, large bone works, a large boiling down establishment, a glue factory and a candle manufactory. There was another proposal for a railway to Botany. After the gold rush, the Chinese became owners of market gardens. There were smallpox in Sydney. The Chinese quarters of Waterloo and Botany were inspected. The huts were found dirty and near each of them was a manure pit, but not a single case of sickness was found. It was found that the boiling down establishment gave off a more offensive odour. In 1882, the Botany Tramway was open for public use. The journey out was accomplished in about an hour, but frequent stoppages occurred opposite the Waterworks Hotel when the engine driver and fireman were compelled to use shovels to clear material off the macadamised road pushed on the rails by travelling sheep. J.C. Phelps's land was subdivided and it became the Sandgate estate. 
all the streets were named after British places, especially seaside ones. A new structure was built at the Sir Joseph Banks Hotel. Entrepreneur Frank Smith purchased the hotel in 1884. St Patrick's Day was celebrated with sports and a social gathering. There was a prize of £10 for a handicap race of 100 yards. The track became a mecca for sprinters from all over the world. The Botany Swamps water scheme continued until 1886, which was the last year of full pumping. The pumps were kept operational until 1893 as a backup supply. The scheme was Sydney's major source of water for 30 years, but did not supply water in the Botany area. Local residents depended on natural sources and tanks. Soldiers were still active in the area in June 1888. A parade of forces was held. The main feature was a sham fight which took place on the Bunurong Road. Over 600 men took part. The North Botany area was incorporated in 1888. On the 21st of December 1889, the foundation stone was laid for a town hall on Botany Road. The railway was not forgotten. It opened for goods traffic in October 1925. The Botany swamps were progressively consumed by the development of industry. However, elements of the swamps, now referred to as the Botany Water Reserve, survive as the East Lakes and Lakes Golf Courses. The expansion of Kingsford Smith Airport in 1948 necessitated the diversion of Cooks River from its original course. Today, Port Botany is Sydney's major port and the suburb has extensive commercial development centred on shipping and freight. If you have enjoyed this video, check out our website, stpeterscooksriverhistory.wordpress.com.